Uh, it's very important during labour, husband and wife must be mentally prepared. They must stay calm. Whatever they learn in the class, they must put into practice that breathing technique. Sometimes a father also musters some skill in a certain massage to ease off the intense pain. Then the mother holding her hands and calming words, it means a lot. They can actually get through it much better. Right? It's the most important is to prevent panic. So once you're panic, your pain threshold actually in tension will build up. When tension builds up, you feel more pain. So that's why it's very important to stay calm. And of course, we talk a lot about other forms of our pain relief as well. But the patient must be actually well versed in you know, the function of the medication and the respective uh, cautions, right? what can happen. So we have a full discussion and then they're mentally prepared and the informed choices is given. There are many options. And then first, of course, is natural breathing technique you master. Number two, it's very important that a medication the mother may actually be able to ask for it. One of them is epidural, which is a painless labor. And mother in the world usually may opt for like an injection called epidemic injection, which actually will work. But it's uh, helps the mother to cope with labor as well. And there's also gas and air. All right, which we call the laughing gas, and uh, can be very useful as well. Of course, there are other things like distraction, massage, you know, or water therapy. Uh, all these are very helpful for the mother. The cervix is purely made of connective fibrous tissue, no muscle. So it sustains the pregnancy. The opening is called os, is closed. So when the baby is due, all right, so this cervix automatically ripen. As it ripen, the when there's contraction, this cervix becomes soft and it will actually medical term we call efface and it gradually stretch over the baby's head. So further good con that is called dilatation. Further good contraction, further dilate, dilate, dilate until about 10 cm and baby's ready to come out. Dilatation usually takes about, you know, uh, it progresses from dilatation one up to 10. Baby will actually, after the day weight, descend. Further good contraction, further descend. And to the back, hit the pelvic floor, which I strengthen the mother during antenatal period for the pelvic floor. Then the head will turn. Then the back of the head now lead the way. Further good contraction, further descend. And the baby's head will flex in to ensure the diameter come out is small. It carry on like this until from outside, then we see the visible size. Once we see the visible size, strict or hair bow patch, that means the baby already go around what we call the uh, no, sacral region. Once they go around the sacral region, the cervix, the tailbones automatically actually straighten. Then the nurse from outside, able to see the visible size, will start calling doctor. Once doctor arrives, nurse will get you to push, and you push and you push until the head is crowned. That's why in the antenatal period, it's very important you learn to participate now. In order to get intact perineum, doctors and nurses may ask you to pant. So as you pant like a little dog, and then your baby's head will slowly come out. And you give doctor time to deliver the, fra the brow, the face and the chin. You also give doctor time to check where the cord is around the neck. If everything is all right, then the posterior shoulder will hit the pelvic floor, internal rotation take place. Then the baby head will correct itself, called in line. Then the anterior shoulder is born, after which the whole body comes up to the mother's abdomen.